The working day begins early in the woolen mills of Keithley. Among the workmen clocking in is a little man you might pass in the street and never notice. Although a Lancashire man, he works in the warehouse of this Yorkshire mill, packing the wool into 300 weight bales. It's a big job for a little man, but this little man has tackled big jobs before. Once he was famous, his name a byword wherever cricket was mentioned. But this is Eddie Painter, the man who left a sick bed in an Australian hospital to help England win the Ashes. It happened a quarter of a century ago. Painter, wearing a hat for protection against Brisbane subtropical sun, defies the Australian attack for over four hours. He has a temperature, but he scores 83 to give England a vital first innings lead. And in the second innings, he hits a six to win the match and the Ashes. Even today, at 57, Eddie Painter lives and breathes cricket. He can still produce the shot which won the Ashes 25 years ago. Let's go back those 25 years, back to Brisbane. The year is 1933. It's the fourth test in the famous body line tour. Douglas Jardine leads the England team onto the field, closely followed by Australia's openers, Woodfull, nearest the camera, and Victor Richardson. In the boiling heat, Larwood opens the attack, bowling orthodox off theory. Then, as runs come steadily, Larwood reverts to his famous leg theory, and that's a move resented by the crowd. But Woodfull and Richardson remain in command, and the English fielders begin to wilt in the torrid heat. Australia's first wicket stand ends at 133 when Richardson is stumped by Ames off Hammond for 83. A good innings against a hostile attack. Bradman is next to face Larwood, and although the Don takes time to settle down, he knocks up a useful 76. Once Bradman is dismissed by Larwood, wickets begin to tump. The later batsmen fail, and Australia, who are 260 for three, are all out for 340. With Brisbane's uncertain weather and batting last, it's important that England get a first innings lead. Skipper Jardine, who opens with Sutcliffe, knows this. He also knows that one of his best batsmen, Eddie Painter, is ill in hospital. So Sutcliffe plays himself in carefully, and Jardine does the same. Runs come slowly. With Sutcliffe the dominant partner, England's opening pair put on 114. And then Big Bill O'Reilly gets Jardine caught behind the wicket for 46. <laughs> Next man in is Wally Hammond. Bradman, who bowled him at Adelaide, tries again, but Hammond drives him for four. This time, Bradman doesn't get a wicket. Next to go is Sutcliffe, another victim of O'Reilly, after a grand innings of 86. Shortly after, Hammond is bowled by McCabe, and England are 165 for three. Yorkshire's Morris Leyland starts with one off the edge, but although he's to star in the second innings, he's never comfortable in the first, and he's soon caught by Bradman in the deep. Now, Gubby Allen hits a terrific six, but he's soon caught behind the wicket or fast bowler wall. It's 216 for six. Australia's bowlers have broken through. A good first innings lead should mean victory, with England's 2-1 lead in the series wiped out. Then, suddenly, a tiny figure appears. It's Eddie Painter, who's come straight from hospital. The hour produces the man, and the little man from Oswald Whistle is the man to save England. He soon loses Leslie Ames, who's caught by Darling behind the bowler. 2.25 for seven. Next man in is Harold Love, who hits a quick 23. When Larwood is bowled by McCabe, 76 runs are still needed to reach Australia's total. Painter gets most of them, defying the Australian attack, while Verity holds up the other end. Painter's gallant innings of 83 helps England to a total of 356 
and a first innings lead. And in the second innings, Painter hits the six, which wins him in the match and clinches the Ashes. So Eddie Painter is the hero of Brisbane, the man whom every cricket fan acclaims for his courage. Well, Eddie, I bet you still remember that match pretty well even now. Now, what prompted your return into the game then? Because you really were supposed to stay in hospital, weren't you? Yes, that's right. The specialist said I got to stay and not to move at all. But anyhow, we had a little while to set in the, in the room and uh, Bill Voss was with me. So I said to Bill Voss, come on, Bill, let's get a taxi and let's get to the ground. What was the state of the game then? Well, the state of the game, I mean, there was five wickets down when we left hospital. And Gubby Allen had just gone into bat. And when I got to the ground, I changed out of pyjamas, changed into my cricket material, went straight into bat after Gubby Allen had got out. So I had no worries in the dressing room at all, either with the skipper or anybody else. And you were still there at the close of play with 24? That's correct, yes. Then back to hospital? Back to hospital, yes. And then I suppose in the second innings, you really did feel much better. I was feeling a lot better in the second innings, yes. Went in your proper place? Yes, I went to my proper place in the, on, in the second innings. I can remember that match very well because Maurice Leyland played a very fine knock that day. And we got four down. And Les Ames and myself finished the match off just before lunch. And at 20 minutes past one, you know what it's like in Brisbane with the humidity and everything. It started raining. And if it rains there, it might rain for three or four days. Anyhow, Stan McKay bowled me this one. It must have slipped out of his hand round about the shoulder eye, and I did for six. And that was the that winning hit? much, yes. Now, in addition to making that winning hit, you also, of course, made the top of the test batting averages that tour, didn't you? Yes, that's correct. An average of 61. But another thing I can also tell you, I topped the bowling averages for the tour as well. That surprised you, doesn't it? Well, I didn't know Eddie Painter was such a good bowler as that. How on earth did you manage it? Oh, well, it was with little guzz-unders and guzz-overs. I, I mean, I can't grip the ball to spin it, you see, so I got the ball all seen stuff. 